Do the trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Our bestseller is all they're cracked up to be. Here at Terrible Book Club, we explore whether you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. You ever passed a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Welcome to episode 173 of the Terrible Book Cube. I'm Paris and this is Chris. The Book Cube. No longer are we just a 2D podcast or a cube. Three-dimensional sound. Oh, this time we read 100 Proofs That the Earth is Not a Globe by William Boyd Carpenter. Self-published in 1885. That's a fucking feat. That's an achievement. Yeah. That's an achievement. <laughs> Uh, so Chris actually found this on a homeschooler's Twitter page where it was recommended for teaching children in the present day, which is why we thought it was worth a read and review. We were like, what could this flat earth book from 1885 self-published by some guy in Baltimore have to offer anyone? Um, yeah. Twitter seems to think so, or at least flat earth homeschooling Twitter seems oh, to think so. Yeah. Uh, so if this is your first time listening to The Terrible Book Club, what we do here on this show is we read books that we assume will be bad based on their cover, title, summary, or some combination of the three. Sometimes, like today, we read books that our patrons, listeners, or friends recommend or mail to us. So we do the opposite of what most people do when they are in a bookstore or while they're browsing the internet and looking for something to read. Usually, this experiment results in a hilariously disappointing read, but once in a while, we do actually end up liking or even loving the book. In addition to our usual barnyard language, today's episode includes discussion or mention of bad math and science misunderstandings and perpetuation of myths and I mean, some conspiracy. real basic perceptive misunderstandings <laughs> as well that I yeah. struggle to put under the umbrella of science. Yeah, bad observations about the world. I think observations is, is the category you're looking for. And, you know, we've got, obviously, we're going to be talking about Flat Earth Conspiracy today. That's what this whole episode's about. So if you are... If we you have, have to get to it eventually. We're just yeah. knocking down all that stuff that was... <laughs> um, yeah, so if you're if you're tired of, of hearing about that sort of thing, pick a different episode. We have 172 other ones. Well, a few were lost to the sands of the internet and... Time, 170 but... proofs that we have too much free time <laughs> or that we're misusing it horribly. I was going to say, no, I have no free time. Uh, <laughs> anyway. All right. So I'm I Chris, do you want to read the summaries today or how do you want to do this? Sure. Yeah, I'll do both here because they're both relatively short and sweet. Um, Here's the I mean, this was a pamphlet in the eight. 18- in the year 1885 so i don't know if there do you pick up a pamphlet in 1885 and like you have to read the back to get pulled in or is it just like good cover design like no the it's the guy with? screaming at you to take it out of his hand i mean i think that's, <laughs> yeah, that's literally that's how it, it worked just like the earth is flat and you're just like ah oh, all right great i'm just gonna wow, get some wow paper eggs. for me <laughs> i'll take that Not, like legitimately yeah i mean i yeah i think i think literally it was like dependent upon the level of street crier you could hire <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's the back of the book summary for the Amazon page for this thing. 100 Proofs That the Earth is Not a Globe, first published in 1885. This book is a reproduction of the original text. The cover is not from the original. Cover designed by RBM 2016. 40-page book! Ah, so this must be uh one of those companies where they find things that have, like, 
just been released from copyright and then they do something small to it so they can republish it and sell it for money <laughs> great so we had a double grift today sick All well right. they got my 99 cents so your 99 cents def- listeners your 99 yes. cents <laughs> thank you patrons uh, all right, Chris. What are what are characters and setting for today? This is a nonfiction I mean, book. I guess what are we the dealing flat with? Flat Earth, the, the 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 Earth that is flat in our solar system, our galaxy, or what have you. Um, humans arguing about whether it's flat or round. As we, I guess, we still have to do. We still have to do. No, we this. don't have to, Chris. We don't have to. <laughs> we really don't, yeah. don't. Also, the the year eighteen eighty five. But also 2023 because I found this on some homeschoolers Twitter. So they're still they're still putting out that pamphlet. Don't 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 teach your children this. Okay. Uh. So usually we like to provide a little summary, like a plot summary. I mean, since this is a nonfiction book, <laughs> Chris is just going to tell you kind of a smattering of things that this author puts in the book. And there you go. <laughs> Take it away. All right, well, Mr. William Boyd Carpenter here thinks the Earth can't be round for the following reasons. First, people on the bottom would fall off or be standing on their heads. Secondly, the horizon is a straight line. Thirdly, if it was round, water would be bulging upward, and then the measurements that we've taken of water bulging upward would be, it'd make it look like the ocean has a bunch of camel humps, okay? What are you, stupid? Fourthly, when you jump, you don't rock it backward because you round Earth people also seem to think that the Earth is moving through space at like, I don't know, 7,000 miles an hour? That's not a number, 7,000. That's too big. You're stupid. And if that was true, every time I jumped in the air, the Earth would pass from underneath me. And therefore, you're stupid and dumb. Also, I'm like, uh, Bible... We're God's special creatures, all that stuff. God really um, likes flat surfaces. He's a cat. That's that's yeah. that's about <laughs> God's a cat. Um, also, uh, there's some wild misunderstandings of drawn diagrams <laughs> in both pro and anti round Earth books yep. and pamphlets and materials. And lastly, well, it just looks flat from where I'm standing. So fuck you, Richard Proctor. Signed, Bill Carpenter. <laughs> neener neener. I forgot. Okay, this was actually like. Uh, like a fucking reddit flame thread but in 1885 (laughs) and like this guy wanted to have this argument in print so bad with richard proctor who had the year before put out uh a a spherical earth proof book or something fucking bill carpenter was so mad he was like i'm gonna print this in my own house (laughs) so mad so he made this book just yeah basically just to be like I'm smart. These other people say I'm smarter than you. Neener, neener. Rich Proctor, you're stupid. And I don't like you. And your butt smells. Like, that's really, I mean, honestly. All right. Your so, butt, which is flat, yeah. like God intended. <laughs> um, honestly, one of the good things about this book is that at the end, after the 40 pages end or whatever, 30 something pages end, there is a whole. There's like multiple appendices and they are all uh, the author, Bill Carpenter, just adding all of the responses he got to his book, even all the negative ones. So it's again, it's just like reading this long Reddit thread where people are just like, this guy's an idiot. And some people are like, yes, <laughs> maybe this guy's okay. He even printed the response from Richard Proctor, which I would like to read right now. Oh, the <laughs> like, fucking you know. sick ass nineteenth century burn from Richard Proctor. Yeah, yeah, go go for it. So, like again, nineteenth century, you really got to get like the ink and quill out and shit to make or, this happen, right? Yeah. Like you can't just post from your bed while you're half naked and like slap the post button on Reddit and then go to bed silently. You gotta like do anyway. You gotta put clothes on. You gotta like, go. <laughs> Yeah, it's that's a lot. Okay, appendix to the third edition, copy of letter from <laughs> Richard A. Proctor, Esquire, 5 Montague Street, Russell Square, London, WC, 12 December, 1885. W. Carpenter, Esquire, Baltimore. Dear Sir, I am obliged to you for the copy of your 100 proofs that the earth is not a globe and for the evident kindness of your intention in dedicating the work to me. The only further remark it occurs to me to offer is that I call myself a rather a student of astronomy than an astronomer. Yours faithfully, Richard A. Proctor. P.S. 
perhaps the pamphlet might more precisely be called 100 Difficulties for Young Students of Astronomy. Great A fucking like uh, no thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I mean Um Yeah, so if you read through the appendices, it's yeah, it's pretty clear that like most people were not having it, even in eighteen eighty five. There's a few people at the beginning, but like if you notice they're mostly either churches in Baltimore or related to churches in Baltimore, and this guy lived in Baltimore, so you kind of imagine that a lot of people were probably just nice about it because they were literally his fucking neighbor or like a business associate and they didn't want to be mean. But all the other responses from not Baltimore are not positive. <laughs> so um, let me read another one. This them. is from most of this them. is let me read the, the other one. This is the appendix to the fourth edition from Spencer F. Baird, Esquire. Okay. Smithsonian Institution, Washington, DC, January 6th, 1886. Dear Sir, a copy of your 100 proofs that the Earth is not a globe was duly received and was deposited in Library of Congress October 8th, 1844. A pressure of much more important work has prevented any attempt at reviewing these 100 proofs, which, however, have doubtless been thoroughly investigated by the inquisitive astronomers and geodesists of the last four centuries. Yours very respectfully, Spencer F. Baird, Secretary SI. I love how they were like, look, we had to... Legally, we had to catalog your shit because you asked us to. <laughs> but, like, we're not going to read it. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> and then you publish that in your next edition. <laughs> yeah, it's just wild to me. That, I don't know. I thought it was actually kind of fun. I got some enjoyment out of the, <laughs> the last few pages of this book. Um, it was also mercifully very, very short. It, like, it was a pamphlet. So the torture didn't go on for very long. Um. Yeah, and I, I guess I just want to say that uh, right up, you know, right before we get into the things that were bad, I, I do want to acknowledge that science like this can, you know, when you're talking like physics and gravity and like space stuff and our place in the universe, I absolutely understand that it can seem incredible and absurd, especially if like you've never heard anything like this before. You know, it's 1885. You don't you know, you got to put clothes on to talk to people. Like, it's hard out there. Like, you don't, you don't have an education, probably. You know, you don't fucking know anything. And then someone's like, yeah, we're spinning through space, and there's a thing called gravity. I mean, I understand how this may seem... I do. I do want to cut them a little bit of slack sometimes. A I little. don't. Um, I'm saying that just I... the tiniest bit of slack <laughs> when it comes only to See, the it's... whole like movements of bodies through space thing, because like you know we didn't Einstein hadn't happened yet, and that was a pretty important leap That's in a fair. lot of things. That's fair. So like it's understandable that you could perhaps still be trying to debate certain things, but even then, even then, there was some pretty good proof that this stuff was gonna it, it was panning out to yeah, be true, which yeah. we'll get into shortly. But, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, it, it can be tough when you're hearing a scientific claim or, or even, you know, something proven with science that challenges your perception, right? And and you have to accept that you can't know everything just by looking at something, which is yeah, hard. Or that your perception is unreliable, which right. is, you know, kind of tricky to grapple with. Right. And, and it's hard. It's hard to be like, oh, I guess my perception is you know, accurate in some circumstances and not others, then you start asking yourself, like, well, under what circumstances, you know, should I trust my perception and under which should I not? And on top of that, science evolves by being questioned and posing new questions. So asking questions and trying to disprove things is part of the process. However, when you keep doing that, when things have been concretely proven in various ways by multiple cultures over centuries and are the basis of everything in your life working. <laughs> you might want to shut the fuck up about it. Like, so my point, my things that were good point of this is like, by, under no circumstances are we saying like, don't continue to question things if you don't understand them. Like I myself had to brush up on a bunch of science for this episode because I'm not an astrophysicist. I'm not a physicist. I am not an astronomer. I'm not a round earth anologist. No, I'm not a, a spherologist. Like I don't, I don't. Um, you know, I haven't really had to think about this stuff 
in the last many years because I, I, you know, I learned all this at some point and then I didn't have to use it in my everyday life. So I stopped thinking about it. And there were, you know, points where I was like, oh yeah, how does that work again? And then I'd, you know, read about it and watch a video and be like, oh, okay, I get it. Like watch some experiments and, and, you know, you just got to remind yourself. But point being the scientific method involves, you know, bringing up opposing theories and like trying new experiments and stuff. That's totally cool. But maybe chill about it if, like, it's very clear that it's been settled. Maybe, maybe no, maybe don't. <laughs> um, all right, Chris, you got anything else before we go into things that were bad? Nah, we already <laughs> talked about how short it was. So okay. that's all right. what I got. All right, all right. Look, folks, <clears throat> if if you're at this point, like, oh, but you know, we only had modern science and math for so many years. No, stop. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> ancient india phoenicia greece potentially others all knew had calculated that the earth was a sphere and that was then passed to the roman empire and then to ancient islamic and christian cultures after that so we're talking thousands of years of math observation demonstrated experiments we're we're happening. Stay in Paris. The conspiracy goes back that far, okay? <laughs> oh, yeah? Um, yeah, who's behind this ball? Like, get out of here. Actually, no, the Sumerians Fucking thought the Euclid earth was flat. Is the, is the oh, my God, you're or... right. Because the Sumerians thought the earth was flat. Oh, my God. That's... <laughs> it all goes back to Ur. Um, the Ur conspiracy. Oh, my God. We've Yo, done there it. it is. We've there solved it, is. it. Actually, I think I'm wrong. I don't think Ur Wait, was... Now I'm questioning my God. I'm actually this is another moment. This is another moment on the on the podcast where my anthropology degree should be ripped from me because I couldn't remember if or was Sumerian. Yes, it was. Okay, all right. I'm not totally off my gourd. I was right the first time. I shouldn't have questioned myself. You know what? Kids believe in yourself. Anyway, (laughs) (laughs) I'm putting on my little red cape. I do have a red blanket on right now because I'm chilly because it's decided to be 50 degrees even though it's June. Uh, all right. so Well, that's because you see the disc has rotated <laughs> in such a way that you're closer to the Fuck ice off. wall. <laughs> I'll bring you closer to an ice wall. All right. Um. <laughs> Okay, point being is that like listen, a lot of people a lot of different people yeah. from a lot of different places and a lot of different ways are all agreeing on this. So you really do have to think that the conspiracy goes back <laughs> thousands of years to actually buy into this. Right, and it's not only just agreeing, it's they've all independently demonstrated it and like tested the proofs cuz basically the way it worked is as far as we know, um, from what I can garner, you know, I'm no historian here, but from what I have read is that ancient India was, I mean, that's like our earliest recorded shit through the Greeks. So like, who knows? I'm sure there were probably other civilizations who had already figured this out, but through Greek writings, we know that ancient India was the one who was like, yo, Earth's a globe. And Greece was like, Greece and Phoenicia were like, no, oh, really? And they were like, yeah. And then like they were like, oh, I guess so. And they were like trying stuff out. And then like they were, they were settled. And then, as I said, kind of passed to other cultures. So we've got all of these thousands of years and diverse groups. And then on top of that, we also have modern technology in the last hundred years based atop that. All of modern, like almost everything about modern technology, whether it's communications, because it depends on satellites that orbit the Earth, or if it's um, GPS, also dependent upon satellites that orbit the Earth, um, mapping, which depends on the longitudinal and latitudinal, you know, grid that sits on a sphere and wouldn't have the same lines if it were on a fucking flat surface, like <laughs> missiles, like fucking architecture i mean i i honestly i struggle to name a single thing that doesn't depend on this i i feel like i want to say farming but someone's going to be like no actually and i'm going to be wrong it's like everything so many things are dependent on this in the modern days you've got just so much going on 
you know, on top of that, you get like literal photos from space. But like, I guess I understand why people are like, oh, those could be fake. Cause like I wasn't in space. Fine. I'll give you that. But you got all the other shit to contend with <laughs> that isn't a photo from space. <laughs> Why are we still yelling about this? Why? Why are we still yelling about it? I, 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 you know, honestly, even uh, from this, I think even melting. this guy up through today and even probably before that, it all comes down to, I think I figured it out more than Smarty Science Man. Smarty Science Man spent time and effort on his thing and he's stupid. I know just based on how it looks that it's not that. I, like, I see this everywhere where people think that they can figure it out better than the experts because, like, the experts have been blinded by their studying too hard. You see this with fucking guitar players who are like, if you learn music theory, you're going to oh, lose yeah. the feel. Yeah. And like, what? I why would you think that? And, like, again, even misunderstanding the idea of music theory, the word theory in that context where they're like, it's, it's the rules. It's not the rules. It's just a way we describe the sounds people been making for right. a while in the patterns and stuff because it allows you to have a common language to communicate with other people or to describe your I work digress. to others <laughs> yeah i, I get, yeah. right like but no i can figure it out better than the way that a lot of people have been communicating for hundreds of years <laughs> yeah i mean and again this isn't us saying like oh don't question everything just accept it the way it, but like the the thing to do like in my I, my view, if you're like, huh, I don't really get that. That doesn't really seem true to me. I mean, just like look into it. Try to understand where that's coming from. Like what I don't understand is why they don't just is why people who hold these beliefs don't just like look at the experiments that are possible. Like so there are plenty of experiments you can do on your own or just observations you can make. So not even really experiments, just like situations you can set up that don't have to be uh don't have to you know stick to the scientific method that show you that the earth is a globe i mean there's just there's a ton of things and instead they just they're like oh i'm gonna look at all the stuff that says it's not that for all these disparate reasons that are unconnected and just like fucking chaotic and unrelated like i just don't get it you know because with i don't know anyway People are just yelling about it because they want to feel special, like you said. They want to feel like they're part of a secret club and they're cooler than everyone else. And I mean, it's it's unfortunate, but it's true. And of Especially course, actually cooler than the people that put effort in. That's yeah. what gets my goat is the. Mm -hmm. Especially, again, in the guitar play. Of course, there's musicians and guitar players out there who can play wonderfully without knowing much of, like, the music theory stuff. It's totally possible to f do yeah. it by feel and ear. 100%. But to kind of, like, act like that's the true way and to lord it over people who have <laughs> spent time working on this and yeah. trying to figure it out based on the work of others before them is just... So sniveling and pathetic. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, and there's this other <clears throat> mis misunderstanding of like, oh, well, you're just being told these things are true. And but in reality, I mean, whether science or music, you're you're experimenting like with science, hard sciences and stuff. You're actually doing the experiments to replicate the laws and theories and stuff that you're talking about to prove to yourself you know, that you try to disprove them and you can't, right? Like, doing the the work, <laughs> making the observations, doing the experiments is what that's like. It's not like scientists are just reading books and going, oh, yes, it, it says that, therefore, it is that. Like, no, they are seeing it. They are seeing it not be able to be disproven. <laughs> like, Yeah, I... <laughs> part of the coursework usually when you get like a degree in a field involves even doing some of the basic stuff at the, at the ground level. Anyway, why don't we get into these hundred proofs? Yeah. So we don't possibly have the time to refute all 100 proofs. I mean, these also aren't even proofs because they don't provide arguments that add up <laughs> to anything. They're just like him going, wham, the earth is flat because I like a picture. That's literally one of the things he says. Anyway, <laughs> I think, most of these can be grouped into a few categories um, and we'll get kind of the simplest, least valuable to be debated ones out of the way first. Literally the first one that I just mentioned, someone drew a nice picture that I like, therefore it is true. 
Um, I don't know if you can find that quote, Chris. I definitely bookmarked it. Point 25. The surveyor's plans in relation to the laying of the first Atlantic telegraph cable show that in 1665 miles from Valencia, Ireland to St. John's, Newfoundland, the surface of the Atlantic Ocean is a level surface, not the astronomer's level either. The authoritative drawings published at the time are a standing evidence of the fact and form a practical proof that the Earth is not a globe. So because a surveyor laying cable... For 1,600 miles, drew a picture that looked level. That's proof. Yeah, I don't know. And there's more than one of these. There's more than one proof where he's like, I like this picture. It was, you know, I thought the picture was cool. Therefore, the Earth is not a globe. I don't I don't really get that. That doesn't make sense. Um, The second one, I mean, obviously, this is, this is ridiculous. Like, saying that you think someone's picture is cool and accurate without giving any detail <laughs> or reproducing it would be good but because no. some surveyor somewhere was like well i'm gonna make this a flat drawing and you were like well there that settles it that's Mr. it surveyor man <laughs> said so i mean until until you can write in 3d <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> buddy so yeah nothing to say there obviously that's very silly the second category is common sense it's the old, well, I mean, it looks flat. How am I supposed to trust anything if I can't believe the Earth isn't flat because everything looks flat to me? What are you saying that I can't see? <laughs> I don't know if you meant to make a blind joke there, but yes, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> blind man making the blind joke. All right. It's a loud stamp of approval. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, again, like we said before, Accepting the fact that your perception is sometimes not going to be the most valuable aid in certain scenarios can be a little tough. But the other issue, the bigger issue here, I think, is like common sense as a phrase is meant to apply to like social constructs that one would be inured to over time and experience and not scientific principles. That's not a <laughs> phrase we use when we're like. Oh, you didn't know that that's how a plane takes off? Well, it's just common sense. Like, no, that, like, common sense is not, it's just a misuse of that phrase. In this respect, it's like, well, if it matches with my perception, it must be true. Right, which is not what that, Speaking of, what that phrase is for. If it matches my perception, and also the Bible says so. Ah, uh, yes, group three. Then it group must three. be. What? <laughs> group three. The Bible says so. That's that's the next group here. I mean. Which I believe the Bible did not say so. I went to Catholic school. They actually made me read the whole dang Bible. And it really didn't say much of anything about the shape of the world. Well, I'm sure that it depends on which version of the Bible you're reading. Because as we all yes. know, it has been run through Google Translate, through Google Translate, through Google Translate until it is a just a shivering, shuddering, globular <laughs> mass of what it once was. Flat, please, flat. Uh, the, fl the book is flat, Paris. Yeah, so I'm not sure uh, which version of the Bible says that it's flat. I'm sure it was just the version this guy wrote um, and self-published <laughs> from his home in Baltimore, 1885. See? See the Bible. Here's, here's my Bible. Something about that seems odd to me. I mean, there were there have been plenty of cultures who did think the Earth was flat, namely the Sumerians. I I want to say the Maya also thought that, but I'm I could be misremembering. Um, it, so it wasn't super uncommon, uh, it, you know, in the ancient world especially. But I don't know that that I mean, because like the way that history, you know, the way that time where our perception of time, maybe it's not true. We're relying on our perception Um, our perception of time, time is a flat circle. Time is a flat circle. Our perception of time is such that, as I said, we've got the chain of the chain of uh, custody here in terms of <laughs> the math and science of the physical uh, spherical Earth was as far as we know, ancient India to Greece and Phoenicia to Rome, to ancient Islamic cultures, to ancient Christian cultures. So, like, at what point would a Christian culture have been like, yeah, the Earth is flat, when, like, they would have received the Earth as a sphere, you know, from the stuff that came before them? I don't know. I feel like he just made this up. I feel like he just found a version of the Bible where land was, like, mistranslated as flat or plain <laughs> or something, and then, and then it got mistranslated again, like, fucking, you know... Telephone. On top of that, 
on top of that, Paris, he's crowing in this pamphlet over and over oh, about yeah. how people are just taking it on faith about what Mr. Richard Proctor is saying about a spherical Earth. And then you hold up the Bible and say, well, the Bible says so. Yeah. So you're taking it on faith, if, especially if it's whatever version of the flat Earth Bible that you found. <laughs> yeah. So pick a, pick a way to go about your deduction. Pick a way. Well, but you see the Christian the Christian stuff and therefore supersedes everything else, you know, for reasons. Because why does where God's because, special people mean that it has to be flat? Like I don't understand. There's no reason for it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, like why does that? There's even one point later where where it's like, oh well. We, the other the astronomers were like, well, everything else is a sphere. Why would we not be flat? And he goes, oh, that's because Earth isn't a planet. <laughs> it's because it's some special place that's not that. Oh my God! It's all right because God. Chris, all right, you teach children. Have you ever had two kids, two little kids in a class, and like they both have a crayon, and one of them's pink and one of them's green? And, like, the kid with the pink crayon is like, oh, I want to have a green crayon. And you're like, and the kid with the green crayon's like, oh, but I like my green crayon. They, like, can't share. And so you're just like, all right, you know what? You both have Gamorphodon instruments. And then, like, they both feel special because you both called their things the same. Like, that's kind of what it feels like. It's like, Earth isn't a planet. It's... It's my special place. <laughs> like, okay, had, Bill. You know what this is in guitar class, Paris? You know what, what? this is? It's picks. It's, it's, it's picks. the pick shape and color. Yes. It's, it's a thing with the children. I they, want the one with the turtle. Yes. The turtle. Actually, yes. I know. But there's many with turtles on I know. <laughs> a turtle pick. Um, yeah. There's one with an alligator, too. <laughs> Anyway, that's stupid. Anyway, it, yeah, it, it, like yeah. your your religion should have no bearing on like an unrelated scientific principle. Like unless, yeah, I, I that that one really. No matter what faith you are, hopefully that makes sense. All right, group four in these proofs, gravity isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> oh man this seems to be like such a weird thing to get hung up about where he's like oh, oh uh like if if the earth was round everyone would fall off the bottom like there's so many times where he t talks about the top and the bottom of the globe uh -huh. and like he's like really misunderstanding the fact that there is no top or bottom with regards to how you stick to a surface on the earth? No, but the Northern Hemisphere, where most of the white people live, that's the top, you see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, aside from this, Newton covered this in the early 1700s. So that's, not... that's a whole, uh, like, hundred plus years before this pamphlet. Yeah, he he did the whole gravity thing around then, and I'm you know other people were observing this before the Newton just had like the math behind it kind of right. published in a form that got right. spread around. Anyway, also not much earlier than this book was published around 1846, Neptune was discovered after being mathematically predicted by Urbain Le Verrier. I'm gonna uh, that's a French guy name. That's pretty good. I'll I'll okay. I'll stand that. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Le Verrier used Newtonian gravitational theory to predict why Uranus moves funny. Okay, so break break for Uranus laughter. Was, break for laughter. Yes. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Uranus moved real funny and weird. And then Le Verrier used math to say, like, hey, there's probably actually another celestial body out here. Which is why and it moved later, weird. Yeah. And then later, <laughs> Johann Gottfried Gall. Gaye? Gall? Gaye. <laughs> Gaia, with the help with some help from a dude named Heinrich Louis de Array, spotted it from the Berlin Observatory. They 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 looked at the math and they said, okay, if that's real, it will be right there today. And it were there. It were there the and day. It were there. It were there the day. Because because they did the math and they, they predicted it based on their other observations and they can be like, okay, well, if that's true, there, sh there might be something here. And then it were there, which is about as like, oh shit, that dude Newton was right as you can get. Yeah, and you know, of course, you might be hearing this and saying like, well, that was just once. But then like, 
it kept happening with other stuff over and over and over again. <laughs> and then people were like, well, these predictions keep being right. I wonder if we can use this to make things like telecommunication devices and airplanes. And then they did. And it all worked. And like, they're, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> it's really complicated <laughs> math, y'all. Like, or, you know, it can, it gets really complicated, I should say, depending on what application you're using it for. Um, but yeah, I mean, you also brought up this point earlier. If we're observing, you know, the other things around us in space and they're all spheres with atmospheres, what, yeah, what exactly makes you think that where you are wouldn't be a sphere? I mean, I guess there's nothing that says like, well, definitely we must be a sphere, but you would, your natural inclination would be like, well, we're probably a sphere too, you know, you couldn't say it with certainty, of course, because, you you know, you never want to be like, oh, well, everything else is this, therefore I am too. But, like, it's pretty likely. And then when you start building yeah, especially- math based on it and it comes, the math comes true, Listen, it's like, man, well, I guess we got to be when it. When a bunch of nerds do math <laughs> and they discover a celestial body, like, hundreds of thousands of miles away and they do math and they point and they think, there it fucking is. And it's there. Maybe your stupid pamphlet about how you can't figure out why people on the bottom don't fall <laughs> off ain't going to work out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I do want to say, though, it is wild to think about, right? It's really crazy to think about, okay, Chris and I are recording this podcast, we are in separate houses, and somehow we are rotating on a globe in the vacuum of space in the solar system, in the Milky Way galaxy, in the, I don't know, I don't get any further than that, because I don't know anything about space. Um, so... If you think about it, it's really, it's fucking trippy, man, right? Like, it's kind of, it's hard to think about because it, you know, makes you question your place in the universe and, you know, the meaning of life and et cetera, et cetera. A lot of things people don't want to think about because they're uncomfortable because they don't have answers. So I feel like this is also sort of about that. Like, people don't want to have a situation where their questions lead to, you know, no um, happy easy answers right like a spherical earth with gravity in the vacuum of space in the solar system doesn't give you a nice warm fuzzy story to go to bed with at night it kind of gives you a a little little creepy little cloak i'm gonna fall off i'm (laughs) on the bottom oh god (laughs) yeah (laughs) um yeah it's not it's not a warm fuzzy fact like none of it is warm and fuzzy it's all very amorphous and scary right doing the math and like finding that thing out there isn't that why doesn't that hit people the same like wizards weaving a spell to like drag things from across the cosmos it's the same shit it's really the same shit well chris is chris it's because witches and warlocks should be burned for heresy (laughs) (laughs) the bible said so anyway um all right so just to wrap up this gravity portion folks Without gravity, there is no way to consistently explain motion on Earth or any planet or stuff in space or make any accurate predictions about movement, right? We're making predictions. We are explaining many, many things uh, with this one <laughs> this one theory, right? And it's working in all of these scenarios on Earth and in space. It is allowing us to make predictions, Uh, so like when we, you know, all the complicated math, all the hundreds of brilliant people who have to do all these calculations to like get something into fucking space, right? That is all based on predictions using gravitational math. (laughs) I cannot stress this enough. Um, and just to, you know, talk a little bit about a lot of what flat earthers will often say I, it, although I have, I had, I did see that some of them do accept gravity. They just like don't, which is like even more confusing somehow. Uh, <laughs> uh, but many of them will be like, oh, density and buoyancy instead of like, they'll say, well, gravity isn't real, but density and buoyancy are real. And 
I mean, my limited understanding of physics is that that doesn't make any fucking sense because gravity is a force and density and buoyancy are not forces. So you cannot compare, you cannot compare like thing, like a force with something that isn't a force. That's like not, that doesn't make any sense. Especially because like density is just because like density is what, uh, you've got an object's mass making it heavier but guess what that doesn't do? Doesn't tell it in which fucking direction to fall. Why doesn't my big heavy bowling ball go up? Why it go down? <laughs> Is it just density? No, because density has no bearing on direction. It's not a force. <laughs> the same shit with buoyancy. God, like, and it doesn't matter whether you're in open air or a vacuum. You need the force of gravity to account for how density and buoyancy function on earth it's all about force it's all about force da, 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 da. I mean, you know <laughs> like when you have a beach ball that's floating in the water and then you can make it go down by pressing down on it despite the whole density thing with the water <laughs> <laughs> anyway speaking of water yeah actually well, the next that brings us right into our next category <sighs> the next category is the horizon and curvature of water, water in general. All right, Chris, you want to get us started on this section? I mean, if really, it just comes down to this guy is like, well, when I look at the horizon, it's a straight line. And also water looks pretty straight to me. He has this thing about like, oh, if this is true, then the water should drop off like hundreds of feet over time. And it's like... My dude, like, <laughs> the surface is curved. That doesn't mean that, like, you would go... Because you're still sticking to that surface because of gravity, of course. It's not like the ocean is supposed to go in a straight line forever, and that's what you're measuring. Like, he has this misunderstanding of sea level being a measure of where the sea is and not, like, a constant absolute distance in like i guess space well i think he can i think he confuses shit now i'm trying to remember was it he confusing elevation and he was confusing elevation and something else i don't remember but yeah he has this idea that like if what if the earth was really a globe then yeah you would see like giant watery humps everywhere which i don't get like why why would that be um, I mean, like, look, water does slightly bubble upward according to where planetary bodies are because of gravity and shit. Like, that's why we have tides. Honestly, you know, I really want to ask Bill Carpenter, ask his fucking dusty corpse, <laughs> what, what form does a drop of water take? Is it a globe? Does it have a curve? Um, remember waves? Like, I, I don't know. This guy... I mean... It kills me. Like, the other annoying thing about his constant bitching about the horizon and stuff and, like, boats is that you can see a boat disappear and fucking... It's a globe. Like, okay, think about it. Because, like, all right. If you were watching... Let's say you're watching, like, a... I don't know, old school sailing ship. It's got a big tall mast and three tiers of sails and, you know, big hull and all that stuff. And as you watch it sail away, it'll get smaller and smaller. But as it continues to go further and further, you'll notice that it will disappear bottom up. So you will watch it. You will actually see it go over the curve of the earth if you, if, you know, visibility is good enough for that day. If it's not, you know, cloaked in fog or whatever. If it's a clear day and you have a long enough shot, you can actually see something disappear over the curvature of the earth. Because if it were any other shape, this would not occur. It wouldn't happen if it was a fucking cylinder because if it's a cylinder, then it would only curve in one direction, right? But we see boats behave this way <laughs> all over the world in any direction. Um, obviously, if it were flat, this would not happen. If, if the Earth were flat and you were watching a boat leave, it would just get, it would just become a smaller and smaller dot, and you would be able to see all of the features, you know, equally until it went well past, you know, the range of your vision. But in reality, <laughs> you see the hull, the bottom disappear first, and then the last thing you see 
are the little sails at the top of the mast and then it's gone because it disappears over the fucking curvature of the <laughs> earth. God. At one point, he was trying to make a point like, oh, it's actually you can see that the masts go first. And I think, bro, you talking about like fog? Like, is that what? You yeah. So uh, and, you know, the thing I was talking about obviously does require like a few different things. Like I said, you know, no fog, good visibility. So no haziness from the water, no um, storms. You know, you, you need like a clear day without a lot of waves uh and you need you need where you are um and i forget how how many feet but like i watched videos of this experiment there's a actually a really great one by um dan olson from folding ideas i've talked about his channel before he's a fantastic youtuber and he did <laughs> He went out, he brought his ass to a fucking lake in bear country to do this experiment, documented it, and he went on this whole thing. I'll put the link in the show notes because I think it's really worth watching. There's a full video that's like an hour and a half, but then there's a shorter one of just the experiment that's maybe like 30, 35 minutes. Worth watching. Anyway, it's just ridiculous. Like, you're not going to tell me that. It doesn't happen that way. And especially when, like, if you ask any fucking boat captain... Boat captains aren't flat earthers. Like, good luck. I They depend on this shit to navigate <laughs> and it. not kill their passengers and themselves. All boat people are in on it. Yes. Uh, and, you know, all of this sort of stuff about, oh, there's no curvature, you don't see it, water, horizon, whatever. All of this shit comes from the Zetetic Astronomy book from 1881 that gave an incorrect formula for some, like, fucking pseudo-made-up trigonometry, which doesn't work when you try to use it because it's just fucking wrong and it's not real math and no one thought to check it against actual trigonometry or any real math and they just keep using this formula from this book that doesn't work it doesn't work it, i mean that's like saying well i tried to add apple to two and i didn't get four and it's like well Apple isn't a number, and you're like, but you said I would add two, and it would be four. No, the word bro. probably had two apples and two apples, and I got four, and I added apple and two. It's like, whoa, yeah. hold on, no, <laughs> yeah, that's not how that works. Um, so I mean, that's just another like grave misunderstanding, and also you want to talk about like just accepting things. <laughs> you, seems like y'all are doing a lot of that over there. <laughs> <sighs> All right, next, okay. next category, Chris. What is it? It's my favorite one of the bunch, oh, actually. This one, it's really? The, yes, I really love this one. Oh, my favorite is the next like, one. <laughs> when you're it's done. extra boneheaded because he's like, well, it, he gets into this thing about how, oh, the round earth people also think that the earth is moving at all times. And he has to d try to disprove both and disproving that the earth is moving also disproves a, a round earth. Which is a little bit of tangential thinking, uh, funnily enough, in relation to what we're about to talk about here. <laughs> that, like, okay, I get that the, the 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 sides have the same proponents here, but I guess if the Earth was a disk, it also wouldn't have to be completely fixed in the universe. I like yeah. one could be devoid from the other, so it's not necessarily true that disproving one would disprove the other. Yeah, why anyway, do we hate he's... rotation? We hate movement, and this <laughs> why? Why do we hate movement? <laughs> Anyway, he's like, oh, well, if the Earth really was moving that fast through space, if you jumped up, you would, like, get rocketed forward. Also, if you fire a bullet in one direction, it goes the same velocity in the other direction. And if that was true, that what? like, this is an incredibly basic misunderstanding <laughs> of, like, momentum and, like, carrying through velocity. <laughs> Yeah, I, like, I, listen, I understand <laughs> that Einstein didn't do his thing for like another 40 or so years. And so that whole like relativity of motion mm -hmm. thing and like trying to wrap your head around the fact that like there is no fixed point and we're really just measuring things against other things at all times. Right. Yeah. But, I, like, I don't know. I don't know if you're if you're in the carriage, right? Like you're in the horse drawn <laughs> carriage and you jump up, you're not getting like the carriage isn't going faster under you because some of the momentum is carried. Also, if you jump in either direction, it's not like you're getting bonus speed yeah. from jumping in the other direction. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, okay, so from what I understand, this is a confusion between rotational velocity and linear velocity. They are different 
because what I can't believe I have to say this. They're different because linear velocity is when something is accelerating in a in just a, a line, a linear pathway, and rotational is of course when it is rotating around an axis or a fixed point. Um and they are different. And um the reason that one of the, I guess one of the reasons we don't feel the earth moving is because earth is going really fucking fast it's really fucking huge compared to us and it only makes one full rotation a day also back to the relativity thing we've been on that moving object our entire existence right. so like the perception is calibrated in such a way that you don't feel like you're fucking rocketing through i guess like because then your brain would have to have be able to perceive the fixed point in space that you move from but you don't have that perception because you're on a huge fucking rock. Look, I understand that it's a scary thing to think about. Again, because these ideas make you have greater, scarier questions with no answers, right? Like, I, I understand why people want to avoid this line of thinking, but it doesn't make it any less real, especially when, again, ev so many things are based on the math. This math... <laughs> If it wasn't true, then I, we wouldn't have any of the things we have. Like, I again, I just want to point out that, like, I'm not saying we're at, you know, the pinnacle of science and math here, but, like, we figured this stuff out enough to put humans in space, to put satellites up there, to have GPS, to have navigation, to have telecommunications, to you, fucking steer ships and locate things and... Like, I draw accurate maps. I make roads and buildings that make sense. Like, all of this stuff is based on this. Airplanes. I mean, I... Mm, I, I I'm trying don't... to find the, the one of these proofs where the, the proof is like, these numbers you're coming up with are too big and therefore you're wrong. Which is like connected to this, right? Yeah. Like, I can't accept mm -hmm. this because I can't even th imagine that number in my puny human brain. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's the <laughs> thing about it, man. Yeah, this is a, just an extension of like, well, I can't observe it or you know or perceive it uh, from this perspective. Therefore, I can't accept it as true. And you know, sometimes you just have to have something explained to you in a different way. Or shown to you in a different way for you to be able to see it. Um, you know, think about people who, I don't know, maybe their friends are trying to get them to see a character flaw they have. And no matter what, they don't notice it until, you know, one of their friends does it to them. And then they see it because <laughs> it's, you know, coming from a different a different angle they're seeing it in a different way and they're like oh i get it now it was literally within my perception the whole time but i never noticed it until someone explained it to me this way i mean it's you know this isn't the greatest um analogy in the world but i i just think that like you can't there's so much more to the world than like what is literally in front of your you know five feet in front of you <laughs> okay well if my friend is an asshole to me <laughs> While going in that direction, if the Earth was a globe, if he was an asshole to me in the other direction, it would hit me slower. Right. This is so the therefore... this is the the the, the property of shitheadery. Uh, where it's <laughs> <laughs> next section. All right. I know this is gonna sound like a lot, but they're all related. So like eclipses, moon and stars, seasons and time zones. All of these are about bodies, other planetary or you know solar solar other uh celestial bodies right my big question my dude my bro what shape would the shadow on the moon be if the earth wasn't round please tell me please tell me what your answer is listen paris obviously the roundness <laughs> comes from the fact that the sun is underneath the flat disk of the earth all the time when the eclipse happens what do you mean it doesn't matter where the sun <laughs> is in the sky for this to work? Um, or that it's above, like, because sometimes it can happen right when the sun is, like, still visible, you know, like, right? So, like, it's above. If you thought the Earth was a flat plane and you see the sun and you see the eclipse happen and the eclipse is round, shouldn't that only work <laughs> from one angle all the time? And if the sun is up, 
Wait, because again, you believe there's a distinct up and down. <laughs> yes, yes, up in and space down. here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Then it shouldn't be that. It should be a different shape. Yeah, I don't know. Um, similarly, rotation of s- the perceived rotation of stars. Like this is like northern hemisphere bias. Like I was joking. I mean, I was not really joking because it's true. But you know, sort of the like global north northern hemisphere bias that's where most of the white people live therefore that's what we care about that's how we see all of the world that shit is in is like a necessary pillar um of flat earth stuff you know he's like oh i don't know we what, what did he say he makes the point that the North Star is always like pretty central in the sky and therefore like that is the rotate like it's always there but if you go to the southern hemisphere, it's not there. Yeah, yeah. Have fun with that. <laughs> Turns out, also, um, hasn't always been Polaris. It's been other stars. <laughs> like, like <laughs> things shift, things change over time. Yeah, a guy who has never been to the southern hemisphere uh, and doesn't think it has any relevance because you know that we roll in the the nineteenth century. So, like. The thing that really kills me about all of this is that there is no flat earth model that can explain any of this correctly. The inherent function of all of this is dependent upon earth being a spherical ellipsoid and gravity existing. Please tell me how fucking winter or summer or weather or time zones or the appearance of the sunset could all work with another singular model that explains all of it. Oh, right. You can't. Because flat earth explanations are a disjointed, nonsensical chaos. None of it, none, there is, (laughs) there's nothing. They all have different i mean they don't even really have models they all just say different stuff or they'll just be like yeah gravity isn't real the earth is flat you know there's like a there's like a also there's an ice wall like game of thrones yeah there's an ice yeah (laughs) (laughs) when that one popped up i was like okay you guys really hearing what you're saying here there's an ice wall um i mean i think they're forgetting that like there's cruises that go to Antarctica, like, I don't know, every day, every week. Maybe not every day. That seems excessive. But there there, <laughs> uh, there were for people. Da- Bob's daily Antarctic cruise. Uh, we ain't coming back. I've also, like, met people who have worked in Antarctica. Like, it's. <laughs> I and Oh, you mean the ice wall guards? <laughs> the people that guard the ice wall for all to, to make the conspiracy continue? Yes. I've known people who have taken the black. I mean. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, don't you think that, like, if there was, you know, if the, their idea of, like, oh, there's guards guarding the wall, like, wouldn't wouldn't you just be, like, shot on sight with a laser, and then they would just be like, I don't know, a lot of polar bear murders happening. Like they're trying to be scientific, and then they turn a corner, and it's this, like, here be dragons shit. Like, what? <laughs> because, again, they can, they can, there's nothing they can give you that can give you a similar level of veracity or proof or or explanation and all of their quote unquote explanations don't make sense if you just apply math to it. and again like the biggest problem with this is that any of their quote unquote math or models or theories like you cannot make predictions with them if you can't make predictions with them then they're not right they're not correct if you, you can't seen, tell me like why another... Uranus is moving funny in the sky with your fucking flat earth <laughs> math or model, then I don't care. Keep Uranus over there. <laughs> Have you seen that other flat earth documentary where they like they start doing the experiments and then it like they get the verification yes. that there's a curve and one of them goes like, well, that's interesting. No, and, and then, then just no, and then one of them is like, "Oh, I think there's a bubble in in the thing," or so they they say some they try to make up some like weird excuse, and they keep doing it, and they keep getting the answer that proves <laughs> the sphere. And then the infighting that happens later in that documentary is great. Um, I, I don't know. All right, last category. No, last category. Yeah, last category. There's a lot of like. You can't travel north and south. And my note was, I have no idea what the fuck he's talking about. I don't know. So I think the thing here is he's like, well, no one goes to other countries by going like the north-south way. 
right? Like the longitudinal way. I see. Mm-hmm. And, it, and and like he's like, well, no one does that because that that's the proof that the Earth is not a globe. Because if if we could do that, then that would we would do that. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't, because down there is where like it's real hard to get through. Why would you detour and add like even if it was like a disc, right? And flat, why would you go through the shitty icy part where I guess there, you know, there's the ice wall guards and shit. <laughs> right, yeah. To length to like lengthen the amount of time you're at sea and using more resources. It can't just be because that we don't want to go through an icy hellhole on this <laughs> lengthy trip. That's obvious no, it's because we're all in on the conspiracy, us boat people. Yeah, I mean and it's that's a good point because at that time, you know, we're there's no aircraft, right? So Yeah, I don't like why <laughs> Why, like, why would you want to go through the icy hellhole where, like, a bunch of explorers fucking died, like, around, the, actually, ah, it might have been around the same time. Maybe it hadn't happened yet. I'm not sure. I don't remember when Antarctic expeditions happened. Could have been after 1885. Uh, sorry, my math here. But I don't History get, math. I don't get how that's, I don't get how that is proof that the shit ain't round. Yeah. When it's just like, okay, well, it's easier to go that one direction. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's flat because people will take the easier route. Well, the other thing to think about is like, I mean, of course, people travel north and south. Like, of course they do. I don't I don't know. (laughs) He's saying they don't they don't do like a full route around. Because he acknowledges that, like, you can, like, go, like, from, I guess, you know, the coast of Europe and, like, maybe Mm -hmm. get back around. But he's saying that they're just going in, like, a radial direction around, like, the flat disc instead of, like, going, like, around the top and bottom. Yeah. He calls it the top and bottom of the globe. (laughs) I mean, I, I mean, I guess he wouldn't. He probably wouldn't have known about this, but, um... Planes don't typically fly that way because of the way, like, weather and wind currents and (laughs) stuff works. And I'm sure this also affects boats. Um, So that uh, has a lot to do with it. Like, the way that air moves around and where it's safe to fly or boat or not, you know, based on, like, storms and all that shit. I mean, all that dictates where aircraft and sea craft go. Um Oh, which I guess sounds really stupid just saying it like that. Of course, you're not going to be like, yeah, fly that plane into a hurricane. But um, I guess it has to be said because people forget that like weather exists. Um, this author and a lot of flat earthers, too, because they can't explain weather. He also he keeps saying this thing that oh, yeah, apparently I didn't get the either. earth is bigger at 45 degrees north latitude versus 40 degrees degrees south latitude like the the journeys take longer I, at the top part i can't find anything about know. that thing being like untrue like it also no one said it had to be a perfect sphere no, it's in not. all directions even newton was like no it's probably like irregularly shaped and it is it's an irregularly shaped ellipsoid yeah. that can actually change size in some portions because of spin force oh that's fun i didn't know that it bulges a little more in the middle sometimes. So, yeah, I mean, this brings me to the... So, yeah, I wasn't quite sure what he was talking about with this, the whole north-south thing and then the, yeah, the 45 degrees north. I don't know. His writing was maybe a little... Maybe it's the wind. Hey, maybe the wind is different at different points. <laughs> maybe. Uh, that stuff was a little incoherent to me, so I couldn't quite understand what he was arguing, so I didn't really spend any time thinking about them. But uh, what I did think about was latitude and longitude. Oh, boy, those uh, rely on the grid distortion, you know, from being laid atop an ellipsoid. Think about how much shit, again, I'm yelling, think about how much shit relies on calculations involving latitude and longitude. Like, it wouldn't work if it wasn't, if there wasn't grid distortion, if it was just a flat plane, it wouldn't be the same. All right, we're done with our major categories. I just want to touch on one thing before we close. This book, you know, this 100 Proofs from 1885 by Bill Carpenter, this doesn't touch upon, you know, the the modern day trappings of the flat earth shit, which is like about a grand conspiracy. Uh, You know, William Carpenter was just like, neener, neener, I'm the smarter guy. Like, I don't know, it's it's 
science exploration time in the 19th century. So we're all fighting to be the smartest smart guy of the smarties. Um, so in a sense, like, I don't know, it's a little more pure hearted. Like it still sucks, but it's not like, you know, Bill Carpenter isn't like the Illuminati, whereas like that's what we got to deal yeah. with now, which sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's like an extra layer of suck on top of all of this. And, you know, if you've listened to this show before, we've talked about the implications of large scale conspiracies, whether in fiction or in reality, where, you know, in this case, literally everyone using almost any math or science based on a spherical Earth, which which is most math and science you know, would have to be in on it. So you've got, like, pilots, teachers, engineers, telecommunication specialists, navigators in space, sea, land, air. Ancient Greeks and Phoenicians. Yeah. <laughs> Ancient Indians. The proto-Illuminati. Yeah, I I mean, the list... They both got I at the start, see? Yeah. See? <laughs> I mean, like, in this version of the world, who wouldn't be in? on the conspiracy like where's the line when do you when do you go from bystander to they part of the they right <laughs> like when you i don't know when do you get indoctrinated um you're talking like what hundreds of millions of people even more and this is like another nebulous conspiracy where there's like a shadowy they somehow all powerful that wants to keep the truth of a flat earth hidden for money but no one can ever explain how that makes sense what money aren't you what money the flat earther conspiracy person posting this on youtube for views and the ad <laughs> revenue yeah yeah are you doing this for money are you maybe being scammed or a scammer yourself you know i i just i don't know how gravity and sphere science is like What's the point of lying about it? And I don't... I can't even come I up with, like, a funny no. thing to say about how to get from, okay, we'll tell them all it's round. <laughs> then we make the big bucks. Right. Step one, tell them all it's round. Step two, profit. And you're like, wait, where's the, where's the middle part? <laughs> um, Excuse me? Like, I... Okay, I hate to say this, but, like... <laughs> Okay, this is not me endorsing this. This is just me saying at least this conspiracy has a coherent mission statement. Okay, so like at least with adrenochrome or whatever, it's like, all right, they want to eat children because they believe the children's blood has a substance that will give them eternal life, which is somehow more coherent than flat earth because you have like a noun and an object. <laughs> Or the verb and like you know it's like all right they think blood has a magical property that'll make them live forever i get why they want to eat the blood they want to kill the children and eat the blood fine like obviously it is patently absurd for a lot of other reasons but i guess i like, can imagine even like a psychopath mentally ill person like believing that and like deciding to eat a child i can't imagine what kind of mental cage or maze you have to build around yourself to go if I tell them it's round, I can get money from them. How is it? I don't. Is know. it just like GPS salesmen or whatever? Like, is that what? but like, I mean, the other the other part that's even more confusing is like, well, but if it all works, how is it a scam? Like, if the GPS works, if I can get to the place also, I want to go, even if you were an evil shadowy Illuminati GPS salesman, you don't care if it's flat. Or round, as, no. as long as your GPS works, you could sell it for money. So it would be fine if you were like, actually, it's flat. My he's my flat GPS for flat Earth, which works. It also it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I just it makes me sad because like flat Earthers and their you know later evolution, this terrible conspiracy Pokemon ecology, QAnon believers, um, they end up just getting taken for their money because it's just an endless scam. Is once you believe one conspiracy, you are way more likely to be the victim of other conspiracies and, you know, end up getting money taken from you, time, and having it really affect your relationships with other people. Uh, and that makes me really sad because I just, I can't imagine all the time people spend on this stuff. I, I don't, I don't know. It really... Yeah, just bum fucking bummer. 
bums me out. Bummer of an it episode. Is. Speaking of, <laughs> can we fix it? I can't believe that it still has to be fixed. I am begging society. <laughs> I am begging all of you to fix the fact that people still go for this because, well, my eyes say it look flat. Please, I I just need a little like uh, no a lot more critical thinking. Not even critical thinking, just like a little bit of it, basic understanding. Like, do we have to do the like the lights down wells experiment for everyone in Greece to like yes. make sure everyone believes this? Yes. Um, to constantly set up a bunch of experiments that are running all the time so that. We can make all the flat earthers watch them. Yes, I'm just going to have a shuttle service in Greece that goes from city to city and shows you the fucking wells. Well, and like the other problem with conspiracies like this is it doesn't matter. You can show flat earthers as much proof as you want and it doesn't matter because it doesn't it doesn't fit their view. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make them special. It doesn't make them, you know, Part of their cool club so they're never gonna believe it um but yeah it's uh it's pretty wild out there um oh uh, no i sorry this could only you know you can fix this if you just reference all current scientific evidence about the earth being a globe including literal video from space and if you think that's fake Consider that much of our technology would not work if none of the science was accurate because it's all based on it. It's literally all based on it. I've yelled about it at least five times in this episode. I, I, if you want to go to Antarctica, you can go, man. I know it's probably going to cost you some money. There, Antarctica, also, Antarctica is like always hiring because like nobody, because it sucks. <laughs> like, um, no, I'm serious. Like, Finally, the job market. That's what I'm <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, um, I've met more than one person who have, uh, who's been down there and they, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I'm not 100% positive this is true, but they were telling me that at least if you're a, a cook down there, they only let you work there for like six months because it's it's miserable. I mean, it's fucking Antarctica. Like, it's not great um, because, you know, there's not... It's just like science. You're just science stations for people doing, you know, a lot of like... Uh, Ice science, permafrost, you know, this is, you know, we're probably going to hit the thing in a few years, um, <laughs> depending on what time. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> Mathematically predicted by some nerd. Listen, I think right there will probably be a horrible alien that will eat us all. Let's check it out. Check it out. Well, it's the Norwegians that find it in the in the original mm -hmm. <laughs> story mm -hmm. and film. Um, in any case, uh, Antarctica is always hiring. Um <laughs> So if you're, if you're, you know. Ads for Antarctica work <laughs> up at the Terra Book Club. Actually, you know what? <laughs> that's how they there make, that's how they make the money. That's how they make the money, Paris, oh. because if it's round, you can work in Antarctica. All right. Hey, oh, you know what? And then they pay you. Wait, fuck. That doesn't work. I <laughs> Wait, Chris, you know what? I was right. Indeed.com. How many jobs are in Antarctica right now? 303 <laughs> really... open positions. Get your asses down oh, there. Shit. All right. You want to oh, be shit. What do they need? a vehicle operator? Uh, tool room attendant, uh, firefighter, carpenter, heavy equipment operator, service firefighter, writer. firefighter <laughs> in in Antarctica is pretty good. It's like just open the door. No, that's not how fire works. <laughs> <laughs> no, you open the door, you're gonna give it more air. That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, uh, large passenger vehicle operator, air transportation specialist, apprentice cargo person you wear cargo pants forever um <laughs> you have to stand outside in cargo pants and <laughs> see what happens Ooh, weather observer uh winter technical it's fucking support cold. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. i'll do that job oh i'll open the oh door every day Chris, <laughs> Just Chris. Be like it's fucking cold i found the worst job that you would only <laughs> be given in hell Okay. Please. All right. Imagine you're in Antarctica, and you are the human resources generalist. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Now, oh god. Now, now Monica, I know Dave accidentally broke your right arm off because he got it stuck in the door, and then it was cold, and it just fell off. I know it's really <laughs> sucks, but like this is what we're all dealing with down here. You want to get thinged? Cooperate. Like each other. We're all gonna get thinged. <laughs> 
I don't know. We- the weather guy gig seems pretty good. Like, I oh would my God. just keep telling people it's cold. Chris, if, cold if I just wanted to fucking drop out of life with bong in hand, inventory data specialist, I could just take a demotion, just do data <laughs> entry at the fucking South Pole. Wait, where is this? South Pole or North Pole? Where is this? Oh, it's for Santa. Paris, it's for Santa. Oh my God. It's for Santa. <laughs> you can be Santa's data Ooh, guy. Ooh, camp manager. Imagine fucking camp <laughs> activities in Antarctica. All right, whoever spotted... Bye. <laughs> yeah, arm falls off because it's true. <laughs> whoever spots the most animals murdered and eaten, eviscerated by a polar bear today gets an extra brownie. Um, <laughs> electrician, administrative coordinator. Man, who fucking wants to go to Antarctica and, like, process paperwork. Jesus Christ. I want to apply to that and be like, is this position remote? <laughs> <laughs> no, you fuck. It's actually extremely remote. <laughs> you, But it's reverse remote, where you are taken away from your life and family. <laughs> uh, um, oh, man, there's so many jobs. Oh, there's so many I, jobs. I really love Antarctica jobs. <laughs> this is a good segment. Oh, plumber? Yeah, you need a plumber. Shop foreman. It's it's always the pipes are always frozen. Blaster. Always Blaster is a job title. I didn't know that. Wait, 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 wait. Do you just blow shit up all the time? Uh, yeah. It's explosion. It's an explosion specialist. That makes sense, I guess. That okay? Yeah, that and the weatherman gig. <laughs> I would do those two. There's a lot of different jobs, man. Uh, I'm I'm looking for. Do they need a guitar teacher? <laughs> they would probably welcome entertainment. I'm <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. There's like water. <laughs> Winter operations manager. That sounds like a. As opposed a, to. <laughs> well, I mean, summer does occur down there. It's just very mild. Meteorologist, wastewater treatment. Uh, pipe fitter. Safety engineer, fuels operator, goes on like this. I mean, ooh, blaster lead. You could be a lead blaster. Uh, <laughs> That's me. Ooh, a senior cargo so anyway, person. Your your cargo pants have your cargo pants have bigger <laughs> pockets. They are more voluminous. Uh, this is this is crazy. Okay, so um, the cargo pants guy is the one that the weather guy sends. The guy that tells you the weather out there, he sends the cargo guy out and he says, "How's it feel?" No, and the way they measure the, guy the goes, way they measure the winter is they see how much snow can go in the pockets of the biggest cargo person. That's scientifically <laughs> yes, how we measure true. winter <laughs> in the Antarctic. Build them all. It's real cold out here today. Oh, they need a database administrator. <laughs> <laughs> You should apply. No, really, apply no, I... and see what... Huh. Fucking God, even in Antarctica, they can't tell you the goddamn salary when they post a job. <laughs> <sighs> 20 penguin meats. How many penguin meats? Is there mac and cheese? I just need to know the mac and cheese allotment. That's all I need to know. This is... Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> So this has been Antarctica Jobs with CBC. Go apply. Sorry, feel so like you really, really don't mind. Really funny. Um, but I have actually, due to the nature of, uh, due to the nature of my employer, I I know several people have been been there, been to various regions of the Arctic. Um. Anyway, Antarctica Jobs. That was fun. That was a fun little treat. <clears throat> um. I'm gonna put a bunch of st- uh, some links in the comments if you know folks are interested in. Learning a little bit more about this, um, the folding ideas video is really just beautiful. Dan Dan Olson's work is magnificent. Love his stuff. Um, so if you're looking for a very measured, nice long form, calm type of content for this subject, go for that video. The other ones are all pretty short. Um, I think I literally will just put like the wikipedia entry for like how earth realm though and it's literally like 50 (laughs) things and you can just investigate those uh if you want anyway uh i guess thanks for finding this chris this was a weird one that's been sitting in the vault for a bit so i'm glad we finally got to it um honestly i i am kind of i gotta say i'm kind of glad we read this because i had to 
watch so many YouTube videos and like read a bunch of shit about science because I don't like I work with data, but I don't work with like, you know, I don't do fucking space science. I work with people that do space science, but I don't do that space science. So I don't remember how any of this works. I'm not a physicist. So it was really good to get reacquainted with all of that stuff and be like, oh, yeah, I remember learning this right. Rotational velocity. <laughs> like, you know, because yeah. in my everyday life, I don't have to really think about those things, like I said, because it's not the nature of my work or or my fun in my free time. So I'm glad we read this. I think it's also really helpful to um, read all of, you know, read or experience viewpoints that are the total opposite from yours just to kind of understand where people are coming from i mean even though this is kind of like nonsensical horseshit i still feel like i more un- i understand more where people who fall into this kind of stuff come from like i get that if you are really scared of existential questions your place in the world your value um this stuff is all pretty scary and can really send you running in the other direction and it's a bummer, but I mean, I, I get it. It's a lot to contemplate. It's a lot to take in as a, a little human spinning, spinning through the universe that we don't really know anything about. On that note, we'd like to thank some special little humans <laughs> spinning through space. Yes. Let's thank the patrons. Thank you, Greg, Veronica, Will, D, Jared, Arad, Senior, Jakub, Lycoris, Elliot, Kieran, Martin, Jay, Luchek, Miri, Yonka, David, Julius, Anya, Patricia, Austin, Donnie, Beast with the Least, Scott H, Robin, Laxdotes, Of the Void, The Flat Taco Eating Unicorn, <laughs> Last Man on Earth 01, Funny Robot with Antennas, Hobbyboy93, Harry, Mason, Renee, Emmy, The Ugly One, Bleach Black Cat, Julius the Nice Dragon, Eastern Swiss, Rudy Bobooty, and our Kofi donor Kiwi thing. Thanks for supporting the show. Yay. Alright, Paris. I'm applying for that blaster position as soon as we get off here. I'm like, what are they gonna I, I'm gonna get down there for like the third round interview and they're gonna send me back after they find out that I've never explored anything in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, at least you get to see Antarctica, right? That'd be cool. Yeah. We're gonna need you to charter a flight to come in for the third round interview. And then ghost. I think you have to take a boat there. I don't know. There are planes. I don't remember. There's a boat involved. I don't remember. The, the earth is too big. I, I, it's, it's too hot. It's like, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you're here already. I, we're not going to give you the blaster position. However, we do need a thing exterminator. Are you willing to do that? <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to Google how to get to Antarctica. Oh, AntarcticaCruise.com, 75% take- off. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can get to Antarctica by boat or plane. Okay, I was right. Um, okay, there you go. Oh, wow, that's still really far. Oh, that's a that's yeah, by out. boat. No, um, you can fly there in two hours from the tip of South America, which makes sense. It's it's pretty short. Um, All right. Yeah, so there's like, well, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of tourists. Uh, yeah, you can can totally go. Everyone go check out Antarctica and apply for some gigs over there. Job market's booming. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sure it sucks. <laughs> but hey, <laughs> if you can't make a living and you know in <laughs> If you can't make it in Antarctica, you can't make it anywhere. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if your choices are like Target in a strip mall and Antarctica, somehow Antarctica seems better. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you there, Paris. I'll see you in Antarctica. Yeah, I'll see you on. Uh, I'll see you. I'll see you on a penguin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Later. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Terrible Book Club. Terrible Book Club is an independent podcast produced by your hosts, Paris and Chris. Sound design and audio editing by Chris, with sound effects and music by Epidemic Sound, and sometimes also Chris. Our theme song is Kiss by Yearn, which is, you guessed it, actually, also Chris. You can find more of his soothing synthy sounds on Bandcamp at yearn.bandcamp.com. Do you want us to review a book of your choice on the show? Do you want access to some extra audiovisual weirdness? If so, become a patron at patreon.com slash terriblebookclub. If you'd like to send us a one-time tip instead, you can do that at ko-fi.com slash terriblebookclub. 
You can also support TBC for free by sharing the show on social media, following our accounts on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or Goodreads, telling your friends about your favorite episode, or by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or anywhere else on the internet. To send us book recommendations or your adorable pet photos, send an email to terriblebookclub at gmail.com. You can do this, Paris. You can do this, Paris. You have a blanket. You had a snack. You can do this, Paris. Okay. There's the end of the episode after <laughs> the credit sequence sound. I am very tired. Ah, oh, full of stress. Okay.